Hey guys, in the previous video, we saw how Pingala documented the Fibonacci number 2,200 years ago in India and how Fibonacci number is the basis of life itself. But did Pingala discover this series of numbers or did Pingala take the knowledge from even more ancient sources available in Hindu texts. In Hinduism, the origin and preservation of life is explained by a concept known as Mrityunjaya. So according to Hinduism, this is the Mrityunjaya Yantra. This denotes the earth, this denotes the water, and this denotes fire, and air, and space. This is the simplest Mrutunjaya Yantra which existed in ancient times. You can still see this Yantra in many ancient temples in this simple form. It's quite interesting because earth and water are at the lowest level, fire and air are at a higher level, and space is at the topmost level. And you would have noticed that I'm starting this point from earth and drawing one continuous line and ending this in earth, showing how earth starts life and it also ends here in the same point. These five elements are called Panchabhuta in Hinduism and these are the important aspects of origin and preservation of life. If somebody is sick, if somebody is critically ill, his family and friends will draw this yantra and will chant a Mrutunjaya mantra. They will chant a specific mantra 108 times every day to make sure that he comes back to normalcy. And this Mrutunjaya mantra is very old. It's considered to be at least 5,000 years old because it's part of the Rig Veda, which is the oldest uh, text known. And this mantra is a very strange mantra. It's not a Bija mantra. Uh, Bija mantras are known only for their sounds and they don't have particular meanings. But this mantra has words which have specific meanings. And the mantra goes like this. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugantim Pushtivardhanam Urvarukam And the mantra goes like this. And it's very strange because the term Urvarukam actually means a specific type of cucumber. A type of cucumber. And this is weird because they're using a mantra like this. They're chanting a mantra like this 108 times to preserve a life. They're talking about a specific variety of cucumber and this type of cucumber is called this courting cucumber. There are various explanations about this. The mantra basically says, just like how a cucumber falls from its mother, life goes on. And this is the secret of Mrutunjaya. Now, there are so many different explanations about this given by various spiritual leaders. And basically, they talk about how cucumbers gently fall from the plant, so on and so forth. But it's very interesting because if you actually observe this cucumber fall from the plant, it's very, very interesting. And I'll show you how this cucumber falls from the plant. Now, you can see as you're watching this video, 
the cucumber is falling from its plant and its seeds are being thrown away in the air and it's being spread everywhere. This is the secret of Mrityunjaya Mantra. Now you've seen how Urvarakam fruit is falling from the plant. What do you think is the secret to this mantra? Why are human beings repeating this 108 times as a ritual for 5,000 years? Believe it or not, the seeds in the cucumber fruit are arranged in Fibonacci pattern. And when it's falling from the plant, the seeds will be spread in Fibonacci pattern. Now, this is the secret of the mantra. Of course, if you look at a cucumber, this is cylindrical, and you will see seeds in various pattern. Now, the seeds are arranged in 3D, and it's a little bit hard for you to understand this because it's in 3D, but when the cucumber falls, the seeds will be spread everywhere, okay? But why is the Fibonacci number so important for the seeds to be spreading in various directions? Why can't it not be in some other pattern other than the Fibonacci pattern? To understand this, this is a little bit complicated because this is in 3D. We are looking at a cylinder-like structure. But if you look at a sunflower, so this is a sunflower, and you will see seeds. And the seeds will actually look like a spiral. And it will be very beautiful. Of course, this is a terrible diagram I'm, I'm drawing, guys, because I'm not good at this. But if you look at an actual sunflower, you will be amazed because these seeds are arranged in spirals of successive Fibonacci numbers. And experts have studied these seeds, and they will notice that there are spirals going clockwise and there are spirals going anti-clockwise, okay? And the spirals will always be in 21, 34, 55, 89. And these are all Fibonacci numbers. So if the clockwise number is 21, the anti-clockwise will be 34. If the clockwise is 34, then the anti-clockwise will be 55. So the spirals will always be in successive Fibonacci numbers. For example, you will not see the clockwise to be 21 and the anti-clockwise to be in A9. You will always see the successive numbers side by side. And it's very interesting because why is it designed like that? Why not just have 21 and 89? Why do they have to be the successive Fibonacci numbers arranged in nature? Why does nature prefer that? The answer to that question is, it's not about the Fibonacci numbers itself, it's about a ratio between these two numbers. If you divide 34 by 21, you will get a ratio around 1.618. This is called the golden ratio or the divine ratio, and it is denoted by the symbol called phi. And if you divide 55 by 34, Again, you will get the same ratio. If you divide 89 by 55, again, you will get the same ratio. You are getting this ratio, which is approximately 1.618. Actually, this number goes on forever because it's 
the most irrational number possible. But it's not just because of the Fibonacci numbers, it's because of the ratio between two successive Fibonacci numbers that is important for nature. Now, what does this ratio mean in the arrangement of seeds? So let's say your enemy gets to play God for just one day and he's going to design a sunflower, right? Your enemy is not that smart, right? He's just dumb. So he's not going to choose this golden ratio. He's going to choose a ratio like, for example, one, okay? This is a sunflower. And he is going to arrange seeds with this ratio of one. What this ratio means is that it's a number of turns he can use around the circle, okay? So this is the center. So he will put a seed like this here. And because he's using this ratio of one, which means one complete turn, okay? So he will arrange a seed like this. He will arrange a seed like this. He will arrange a seed like this. And he's done. Okay, so his sunflower looks kind of silly, right? So his sunflower looks like this. Of course, you can see this never occurs in nature. No sunflower, no flower is going to arrange its seeds like this. Now, let's say you get to play God for one day. So you are going to become God. And what number would you choose? Obviously, you're smarter than your enemy, right? So you're going to come up with some number like 0.25. Okay, so this is the number that you're choosing. So your flower, your sunflower, is going to look like this. So this is the center. You put this first seed here, right? So 0.25. That's like one quarter, so your second seed would look like this. And again, 0.25, your third seed would look like this. Your fourth seed will look like this, okay? So, and if you keep on going, your seeds will look like this. It's like a four-spoked wheel. Now, this is much better, right? This design looks much better than your enemy, right? But still, this is not the best design in the world. Of course, plants are much, much smarter than human beings, right? This is why plants are worshipped as gods in Hinduism, right? Because plants have extraordinary intelligence. And that's why plants are choosing this ratio, which is the golden ratio. So the plants are choosing a number called the golden ratio, okay? And if you arrange the seeds in this ratio, you will have these amazing spirals. And you can see that the seeds are also perfectly aligned, which looks kind of surreal, okay? But the most important question is why? Why do the plants have to sort of, quote unquote, think about the golden ratio and why do they have to arrange the seeds in this fashion? Why not just arrange them with your design of 0.25? Now, experts sometimes now claim that this is very important so they could use this space and maximize the number of seeds, okay? So this is the explanation that experts are giving right now. But plants really do not care about this at all. They don't care about saving space. What they do care about is Mrutunjaya, right? Now, what is Mrutunjaya? Think about Mrutunjaya while I clear this board. Okay, so what is Mrutunjaya from a plant's perspective? It's to create and sustain life. 
Now, what is the purpose of any seed? Why are plants creating seeds? The idea is to spread its own genes. Every seed is a pocket, right? It's a gene pocket, and it's going to be spread everywhere. This is exactly why the seeds are arranged in Fibonacci pattern. Now, if you arrange your seeds like this, according to your enemy's design, in a sunflower, and then the wind blows, all these seeds will go only in one direction and they will fall down like this. The chances of all these seeds germinating and growing into plants are very slim because they all fall in the same place. They will obstruct one another. They will get less sunlight. They have to take the water from the same place. If you arrange it according to 0.25, when the wind blows, you, you make sure they only go in four different places. But when you arrange them according to the golden ratio, when you arrange them in spirals, in this complicated spiral pattern, and when the wind blows, this is the best design because it's going to go in hundreds of different directions. So the plant is arranging the seeds beautifully to maximize Mrutunjaya, to maximize life, to maximize its spreading of its genes. This is why the plant is arranging its seeds using this golden ratio. Now, of course, this is what is happening in Urvarukam, right? So this is what we see in the Mrutunjaya mantra in 3D, right? This is 2D, and but if you look at the seeds in the cucumber, this is why you see the seed sort of exploding in various directions, okay? But every plant uses this golden ratio in 3D as well. If you look at a plant, you'll see a seed like this, and then it'll take a particular turn, and again, it'll have another seed, and again, it'll take a particular turn, and it'll look like this. The third seed will go like this. The fourth seed will directly point to you. The fifth seed will be like this. When you look at a plant and you're you see that it has five leaves, you don't think much, but when you look at it from the top, from the top view, the five leaves will look like this, okay? And this ratio of turn, the natural arrangement of how leaves are being placed in these plants is called the divergence ratio. Okay, and believe it or not, this divergence ratio matches the golden ratio. Why? Why is a plant arranging its leaves to the golden ratio? We saw the seeds, but why do the leaves have to be in Fibonacci pattern? Why do the leaves have to be in this golden ratio? Mrutunjaya, right? Because Mrutunjaya, it's not only creating life, but it's also preserving life. It's also protecting your own life. Remember, this is why people are chanting Mrutunjaya Mantra to protect somebody's life. What is the purpose of these leaves? What do leaves do? They have to use the sunlight and convert it into food and make sure that the plant survives. If the, the leaves are arranged one on top of another. Only the topmost leaf will get all the sunlight. So you can see how intelligent the plants are, you know, in arranging the leaves. They have to maximize the amount of sunlight each leaf is getting. So they can, all the leaves can use photosynthesis and convert sunlight into food 
and then make the plant live for a very long time. If the plant is not smart enough and it does not use the golden ratio, think about this. If a plant is not following this ratio and it has very less leaves, it will not be able to produce enough food and the plant will die. If a plant is not following this ratio and is producing too many leaves, it's useless because many of the leaves will not get sunlight and it becomes pointless. And again, this plant will not have a good life. So to have an ideal life, the plant has to follow the golden ratio. I will come back to this uh, diminishing model and the overcrowded model later. But so far, I think it would have been easy for you to understand the concept of Murtinjaya. So how do you conquer death? How do you live forever? You can become immortal by living alone like Isaac Newton, you can make great theories and you can become immortal. But most people and other living things really become immortal by creating more life. And you have to follow the golden ratio for the life to sustain for generation and generations. This is the most important point. Okay, so you've learned a lot from the Mrutunjaya mantra, how the mantra is showing the Fibonacci pattern and the golden ratio. But how is Mrutunjaya yantra related to the golden ratio? So as we saw before, the Mrutunjaya yantra is just a five-pointed star in its simplest form. Let me clear this. Let me clear this. If you take this line, this is the longest line. And if let's say we call this line XL, okay? And the next long line would be this line. Let's call this L, okay? And if you take this line, this is the, this is the next long line, but let's call this M, okay? And this is the shortest line, okay? So this is, let's call this one SS. So the ratio between XL by L will be the golden ratio. The ratio between L and M, medium, that will also be in golden ratio. The ratio between M and S, that will also be in golden ratio. This is extraordinary, and they have been using this for 5,000 years in ancient Hinduism. This is why I think Pingala did not discover the Fibonacci series. He merely understood the concept of Fibonacci series and the golden ratio from ancient Indian texts. Now remember the Mrutunjaya Mantra and the Mrutunjaya Yantra are coming from Rig Veda, which is at least 5,000 years old. And you can see how the Mrutunjaya Mantra and the Mrutunjaya Yantra clearly point to the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers and their connection with life itself. Today, we use a modified form of this Mrutunjaya Yantra. I will clear the board and I'll show you how this works. Okay, in the last few centuries, the Mrutunjaya Yantra was modified so families could work with the, the modified version. This is called the Maha Mrutunjaya Yantra. And again, it'll be a five-pointed star like this, and it will be surrounded by eight petals.
The mantra has not changed. The same mantra is used even today. And uh, some forms actually have three eyes of Lord Shiva to denote Lord Shiva in the center. And specific rituals are done on a Triodashi, okay? Which is the 13th day, okay? I don't know if you're following this, but all these are Fibonacci numbers, okay? Three, that's a Fibonacci number. Five pointed star, that's a Fibonacci number. Eight petals, that's a Fibonacci number. 13, that's a Fibonacci number. Nobody's paying attention to this, but we are following Fibonacci numbers and using this for preservation and creating life. And if you divide one number by the previous number, again, you will get the golden ratio. No wonder when new religions came, they converted this into witchcraft, right? They, they said this is all <laughs> the work of the devil. So this was the best way and this was done deliberately to suppress ancient knowledge by sort of demonizing this kind of information. In the West, this is considered the symbol of witchcraft, okay? Some people even say this is the symbol of Satan or devil, but this is the secret of life itself and it was known for thousands of years in ancient India, but there is one more sacred yantra, and this yantra is done secretly in the hills of Javadu, and it's performed by a sect called Kalamukha. There is a particular sect called Kalamukha, and they perform some secret rituals, and it's also based on Mrutinjaya. Yantra. This yantra is called the Kala Mrutinjaya Yantra. It's very interesting because if you go to Wikipedia and if you look at the Kala Mukha, Wikipedia will tell you that this sect is extinct. These people no longer exist. And uh, Wikipedia will even claim that, you know, they paint their faces black because it says Kala and uh, many people think Kala means just black, okay? But Kala also means time. And also means death. And I'm sure you will understand the connection between time and death, but the Kala Mukha's the word Kalamukha is associated with time. So what type of yantra do these Kalamukhas create? They create a yantra called the Kala Mrutunjaya yantra. Let me clear this board and I'll show you how this yantra looks. Okay, so what the Kalamukhas will do is they will clear a large plot of land in the woods, they will clear all the trees. And at midnight, on a new moon day, they will create a simple five pointed star like this. And they will chant the Murtunjaya mantra for 108 times. And after four and a half days, Around noontime, they will close this on all sides. So it will look like a pentagon. Again, after four and a half days, they will again change this into a five-pointed star. Again, after four and a half days, they will close this into a pentagon. Again, after four and a half days, 
they will make this into a five-pointed star. Of course, this is a very bad drawing because I'm not good at this, but they will continue this for 45 days. And this is the Kala Mrutinjaya Yantra. And this is remarkable because it shows how a life grows with respect to time. Think about it. They start very small, and as time proceeds, any species would grow according to the golden ratio. And this is why every species is able to spread dramatically and fill up the planet. Think about human beings. You know, we have billions of human beings today. But at one point, they would have been a small group of people. Why are they able to become the most dominant species on the planet? Why do we see human beings everywhere? Because they were able to grow in the fashion corresponding to the golden ratio. And people think there is a new field of study in the last few centuries. It's called fractals. Okay, fractal or fractals. And they think this is a new study, but Hindus knew about fractals for thousands of years. Hindus not only knew the concept of fractals, but also its connection with the golden ratio. Hindus called it mandalas. Now, what is a mandala? You can see mandalas in ancient Hindu temples and in also places where they practice Hindu rituals. The mandalas are these fractal designs. There are many types of mandalas. There are circular mandalas, and uh, there are also square mandalas. For example, they'll start a mandala like this. This is a square, and they will continue to proceed making children. So they put a bigger square and they put a smaller square on all four sides. Again, they will continue to make even smaller squares on all four sides. Okay? And they use the golden ratio, they use the golden ratio of 1.618 to draw the mandalas. They actually take measurements and they use the approximate ratio of 1.6 because what happens if you don't use the golden ratio? If you don't use the golden ratio and if you make these squares too big, after a few continuations, these squares will start hitting each other because you're not following the golden ratio. What if you make these squares too small? The mandala will come to an end very quickly because it cannot sustain for a long amount of time because these squares have become too small too soon. This is why the golden ratio is so important. Remember I told you this is relevant to plants and their leaves? If there's very less number of leaves, the plant will die. If there are lots of leaves, again, the plant will die because of overcrowding. Hindus are actually using this concept and this ratio in creating mandalas. And it's interesting because ancient Hindus knew about this concept in drawing mandalas. And today, Experts are working in fractals, and now they recognize that the golden ratio is very important to design fractals, because if you don't follow the golden ratio, the fractals do not survive. Okay, interestingly, the fractal of a pentagon is 1.6 dimensional. And that's very strange, because 
We normally tend to think of dimensions as whole numbers. You can see one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional. But what is 1.6 dimensional, right? And uh, notice the connection between 1.6 and its proximity to the golden ratio as well. Now this sort of goes beyond the scope of this video, but mathematicians confirm that the fractal of a pentagon is 1.6 dimensional. And I don't know if you noticed this detail about the Kala Mrutunjaya Yantra, right? Why were they doing this ritual every four and a half days? Now it took me 10 years to figure out that four and a half days is 108 hours. Four and a half days comes to 108 hours, which is a sacred number in Hinduism. And the angle between two sides in a pentagon, that will also be 108 degrees. And the Mrutunjaya mantra will also be chanted 108 times every day while they're doing these rituals. So you can see how the 108, which is another number for the basis of life, is consistently used in the Mrutunjaya Yantra and Mantra. And there is a lot of advanced Vedic mathematics involved that we have not discussed. Let me clear the board and show you just a quick glimpse of what's involved in that. Okay, so if you look at the Mrutunjaya Yantra, one side will be 108 degrees. And this will be 36 degrees. And if you add both of them together, you will get 144. And believe it or not, this is what Kala means. Kala is a unit of time that is 144 seconds. This is the ancient unit of time followed by Hindus. And it's even more interesting because 144 is also a Fibonacci number. It is the 12th Fibonacci number. And this is just advanced esoteric knowledge. We're just scratching the surface of ancient Hindu mathematics, which is both science and spirituality. Most people in the Western world do not understand this. If you watch that movie, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, you see how there is a person who prays to Kali which is the fiercest deity known in the world, right? Kali is this big black deity, which is usually shown killing somebody. But Steven Spielberg is not understanding the concept of Kali. He doesn't understand that it's not only limited to Hindus or Indians. Kali will kill Christians, Muslims, and everybody alike especially if you make mistakes, Kali will kill you sooner because Kali means time. Kali is the personification of time. Time will kill you unless you use Mrutunjaya to create and sustain life. I hope you guys like this video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. Please give it a thumbs up and do share it with your friends if you found this video useful, okay? 